to East Asia, and it's my pleasure to introduce a faculty member of the College of Music, Mutsumi Wateki, who is going to give us, I think, a sort of a demonstration, an exploration of uh, art songs from China, Korea, and Japan. Good afternoon. Um, so I am Mutsumi Wateki. I'm an associate professor and vocal coach and pianist at the CU Boulder College of Music. Today, I would like to uh, introduce art songs from China, Korea, and Japan. Art songs written in the Western classical music style have been very popular in these countries. Western music was first introduced in these countries at the end of the 19th century through missionaries and uh, military bands. Soon after that, composers from these countries started to study Western music, and Western style music became somewhat more favored by the traditional music. Um, although each of these three countries has interesting history in terms of how they adopted Western music, um, in this very short presentation, I'd like to take a very brief look at how these Eastern Asian composers combined their <coughs> native poetry, traditional music, and Western music. I have three wonderful singers from the College of Music, Wei Wu, Selim Choi, and Adel Taro. The uh, first song is called a Ballad of the Great Wall. This is a good example of combining Chinese pentatonic scale and Western harmony in a simple folksy style. Pentatonic scale means five note scale. So in this case, um, this is kind of typical Chinese sounding pentatonic scale. And um, this song is still a very popular song, and I found many YouTube videos of this song with more elaborate or orchestra accompaniment. Today we will just perform the first verse. And you have, um, I typed uh, text on your handout if you're interested in uh, what's going on. during this movement. Uh, this song also uses pentatonic scale, five note scale, but in uh, minor mode. And, um folk song like style but the flavor is very different from the Chinese song we just heard. Thank you. 
very surprised by the beauty and quality of Chinese songs written in the earlier part of the 20th century. Next song, Longing for Home, was a very beautiful, um, has a very beautiful melody. And at first, um, I thought it sounded like an Italian opera aria, like an uh, Italian song in the bel canto style. Then I discovered that this composer studied in the US at uh, Oberlin Conservatory and Yale University. Um, since Japanese musicians tend to study in Europe, not in the US, uh, this was a surprise to me, and it was a surprise to Wei, too. <laughs> introduced in 1885 by American missionaries. I was told that this composer, Lee, Lee Hyun Ryo, <laughs> is one of the only four or five important composers from the first half of the 20th century. He was known as Korean Schubert, and he wrote more than 400 art songs uh, with Korean texts and on, uh, in the style of uh, Western classical music. This song, Flower Cloud, is a delightful example of adapting the Western music style and it is still very popular among Korean sopranos. Um, then it is very important to remember that Korea was occupied by Japan from 1910 until the end of World War II and then there was a Korean War from 1950 to 53. Korean art songs often carry hidden messages such as um, sadness of losing their own country, separation of country and families, and longing for the homeland. So sometimes you might hear this just the love song between one person longing for another person, but this could be actually a message about longing for the country itself. Um, this uh, song, um, Flower Clouds, uh, was written shortly after the Korean War, and the middle section of this song should be interpreted in that way. Oh, 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 oh,
a great example of serious through composed art song. Through composed means that it's not strophic, it doesn't repeat the same melody many times. And um, this was a big surprise for both Wei and myself to find out <coughs> that this song was written in 1912. This is the earliest song in today's program. The composer was studying in Germany and he chose this very famous poem from Seo Dynasty. And this is a very dramatic song. in the second half of the 20th century in Japan. He wrote many children's songs as well as, as art songs for professional singers. Uh, many of his songs have apparent French flavor and even those written right after World War II have an elegant and sophisticated but still very accessible style. This song, Kami, is also a good example of recitative style in Japanese language. Recitative means spoken, um, like half spoken, half singing. And in uh, 
the word for I is watashi, but polite form is watakushi, but we uh, reduce the vowels, so we just say watakushi, no vowels. So this um, song in incorporates that style. atonal and avant-garde songs from these three countries. But today I wanted to focus on the songs which are still popular among classical singers in each of the, uh, these three countries. The last song is an example of a song by a living composer who strives to combine traditional sound and Western music style. Li Yanzhou is actually the son of Li Yun Ryu, the first Korean composer uh, on this program. And his son, Charles Li, is the principal cellist in the, uh, our Boulder Philharmonic Orchestra. So uh, when I found out this, I was very excited to know that we have this connection with very famous um, uh, Korean. It's based on one of the best known love songs and folk tales in, uh, of Korea. 
This story is also one of the five surviving pansori stories. Pansori is a traditional Korean music, which is a singing and storytelling. It's like an uh, ancient opera or theatrical um, uh, performance uh, performed by a singer and a drummer. Uh, this song uses Korean dance rhythms, pentatonic scale, parallel fourth, and a vocal cadenza which imitates this pansori singing. presentation, but I hope you enjoyed hearing these songs. Uh, we all hope that these songs will be included in the standard voice recitals in the United States and uh, Europe and elsewhere all over the world. And I really <coughs> thank uh, all the performers today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Matsumi and performers. And we do have some time. Uh, would you take questions? Yes. Uh, and maybe the performers yes, themselves would take some questions <laughs> too from the audience. Any questions? Yes. I'm sure that all three countries that we heard the songs from had their own classical traditions. So how do we understand their very um, 
their embrace of the Western style. Could I, could I say my answer first? Sure. I grew up uh, learning and hearing more Western music than the traditional Japanese music. Mm -hmm. So I will ask uh, uh, Seryun and Wei how they grew up. What was the question? Uh, <laughs> so you have your own traditional music. Yeah. So how do you embrace and how do you adapt the Western music style? <laughs> I'll interview him. So, did you uh, did you know more class uh, Western classical music or more Chinese music when you grew up? Um, I think it's a uh, half and half. half and yeah, half. yeah. Because okay. when when I when I grew up, it definitely like a we we're, we're learning the the Western history, music history, and everything. And uh, when I was in a choir. There's like a, many like a Western composers' music, yeah. But did you learn any traditional Chinese music? Mm -hmm. As well, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. For those like Chinese art songs, that I think um, for all the like uh, uh, boy singers when they go to the college, I mean, or go to the conservatory mm -hmm. as a boys major, we have to learn that and and uh, in a different time period okay. to composers, yeah. Okay, um, actually, we scheduled uh, <coughs> the music class in our youth, um, like elementary and the high school, or even well, in college maybe. So um, around that time, we actually not 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 only we just um, learning the Western style of music, but also we actually um, like um, learned um, our folk tune. So. In that um, the schedule of the class is actually we are learning both. Yeah, both. I, I think uh, Korea has a better system in that way. It's really mandatory to study traditional music in music conservatories, <coughs> but not in Japan. So we learned some, a little bit about Japanese traditional music, but in the conservatories, we just learn Western music solely, 100%. Any other questions? Back. Yes. Oh, no. Who performed the songs uh, when they were written in the 20s or 30s or 50s? Was it only a, a professional kind of thing or were they? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Mostly it's professional singers. <coughs> um, as far as I know, I think in, in all these countries, they um, tried to create songs for uh, school music textbooks or some organizations to sing in the Western style. So the Chin Chin Chidori was a children's song, so children learned those songs too. And maybe the first Great Wall song, like everybody sings, right, in the maybe school organizations. So uh, some songs were written for professionals, and uh, many other songs in the Western style are uh, written for everybody. Yes, Zoe. For many of us in America, when we think of European classical music, we, we often think of, of elite culture, uh, culture previously founded in courts and this kind of thing. And that's the meaning that it has, has classical music. Um, the meaning that it still has to us is uh, upper class status. So I'm curious what this music means to you all China. What, what meaning does it have to you now as, as a system? Well, a different time period has a different meanings. Like in, like in China, the last song I just presented, that's all the songs involved like a, back in like three or five thousand years, the, the poetry they wrote it for. So it just like represents definitely part of our culture. You know, it's like all the, they can use this way to, to keeping those like poem, like poetry still going around. And uh, for us to learn the Chinese Chinese art songs, like it uh, has a different, like a uh, well later on uh, in the Cultural Revolution, there's more the, like uh, th those songs only for wrote for that time period. But like uh, uh, before that, the, the the Chinese art songs is like a, I think is they related a lot of people, involved with lots of like cultural things. But what about the sound of it? The sound is very 
Western Bell Canto. That's a, yeah, the same because that the, the, <laughs> that's just like a very interesting because the, the composers, they are like a study in America or study in Germany. So there are definitely some like a <coughs> music elements that sound like a Western. Very. very but yeah, it's too, kind of like very good mix. <laughs> <laughs> One article I read said that in China, uh, Western music uh, was considered to be superior to the traditional music at the beginning when it was introduced. This, it was just one uh, article, but um, you know, Japanese people always like something new, right? So I think when the Western music came, Japanese people thought, oh, that's better, you know, um, I think that's in our culture to just adapt. Then later on we realized, okay, we have traditional music, traditional culture, so we have to embrace both. So that's why this, uh, the last compos Korean composer, he, was, he really tried to use the Western <coughs> compositional technique, but still um, combine <coughs> uh, traditional Korean music into it. Okay. We have a question for Adair. last semester about this and one thing that she has uh, specialized in and has learned to do is to teach English speaking people how to speak or sing in Japanese and so throughout this semester she's been coaching me but actually the actual language isn't very difficult to pronounce I could not read the language just yeah. straight with the, the, the symbols and everything but I, I, the language itself the, the vowels and the consonants were had very simplistic rules and once explained I picked it up pretty quickly and I find that the more you study languages the easier it is to pick up a new one so I've studied French, Italian, German and so picking up Japanese is different but there are some similar qualities and rules to it. Are the uh, native classical uh, musical systems in Japan, Korea and China, are they more improvisational like jazz or are they more notational follow exactly what the composer had in mind? More notation? More notation? Yes. The classical Korean? Yeah, classical Korean music will be followed more notation and not the improvisation. So, mm -hmm. more like a more <coughs> traditional music will be followed <coughs> much more like improvisation, but the classical music will follow the special rules for the music, so that follows the, that rules and should match up the improvisation. So, it might be similar in Japan in that we have traditional classical music, you'd learn everything from the teacher and you try to do exactly, but if it's a folk music, then the improvisation will uh, come in a lot. So there's main tune and you can improvise around it. So I think we have both probably in all three countries, probably. <coughs> Well, if there are no more questions, we have one more round of applause for our performance.